Hi everyone, it's Nicole Steele from The Joyful Stamper and I am going live a little bit earlier today because I have to take my daughters to some doctor's appointments or eye doctor's appointments this afternoon. Apparently all their time online with online school is causing some headaches so we're going to get some blue light glasses for them. So I didn't even know such a thing existed. But today I have some vellum and um, foil little tips for you. So vellum and foil, uh, vellum and foil have have a unique texture to them, and they're really fun to play with to get some special effects. So we are going to make two cards today. These are the two that we're going to make. The other two were just additional samples because I couldn't stop playing with it once I started. So we'll start with this card here, and I'll show you how to get that really cool foil effect there. All right, let me move my laptop here. If you're joining me live, welcome. If you are watching the replay, welcome. I'm, again, Nicole Steele of the Joyful Stamper, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So we're, our card base is going to be soft sea foam, and this is at 4 and a quarter by 11 inches, and I've scored it down the middle at 5 and a half. But we're going to set this aside because we're not going to use this until the very end. So, and... We're going to do some stamping first so that I can do all the cutting and embossing in one easy step. So first we're going to stamp some flowers. We're going to get two of these. Use my embossing buddy on my cardstock. And this stamp comes from the Timeless Tropical stamp set. This is a stamp set that is carrying over to the new Stampin' Up! catalog. And I'm so happy because it's totally a favorite of mine. I bought it initially because of the cute little pineapples that are in there. So I've stamped this flower twice in Versamark ink, and you can't see it right now because Versamark is a clear stamp. But I'm using Versamark because I want to heat emboss. So we're going to sprinkle on some white embossing powder, just like that. And when you get your stamping and when you get your embossing powder, just empty the jar right into a plastic container just like this and add a little plastic spoon and it'll make it so much easier and neater to use the embossing powder. You won't have to try to get it back into a little tiny jar. So now I'm going to turn on my heat tool and I'm going to melt this powder. If you've watched my videos, you've seen me do this a million times before. So you let your heat gun get hot and then aim it at your stamped image and you'll see the embossing powder start to melt. Particularly on the next card, we're going to be doing quite a bit of embossing. Okay, now I'm going to pull in my die cut machine because we're going to emboss and die cut. So I've got my plates here, and this is a cuddle bug machine. Mine is about 17 years old, but the good news is Stampin' Up! is coming out with a new die cut and emboss die cut and embossing machine. Um, it's going to be featured in the new catalog, but it won't be available just yet on June 3rd. It will will be available though early in the catalog period. So there'll be a mini one and a standard sized one. Okay, so I cut out the first flower, and now I'm going to cut out the second flower. Okay, there we go. Yep, oh, it looks like I did not get my framelit aligned just right with my image there. I must be a little petal or two off, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and use that anyways. You know, these things happen when you're going live. So Noble Peacock has some really brightly colored foil. Old Olive, Blueberry Bushel, and I forget the other color. And you can get a really dramatic effect with what I'm about to show you. So I'm using the Coastal Weave 3D embossing folder, and I'm putting that foil right into the embossing folder. And now I'm going to run it through my cuddle bug machine and 
then I'll run it back through again so I get a nice deep impression. And I'll take this out. And let me remove my machine here. You see how deep that is? We're gonna do a little sanding with it. So I went to the dollar store and I went to the beauty section, the beauty aisle with the nail polish, and they sell a two pack of these nail sanding blocks for a dollar. They are perfect because they're easier to hold than sandpaper, which is what I initially used, and they're the perfect grit. So when you dry emboss something, it raises the design a little bit on the paper. So you have recessed and I don't know what the other one was, debossed areas. Parts of it are raised is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to gently sand across this and the foil color is being removed from the parts that is from the part that is raised. That's the part that the sanding block is coming into contact with. So I'm removing parts of this foil color and it's going to reveal its core color underneath, but the debossed areas are still going to retain the original foil color. So you get I don't know. I just I like the look. I don't know what you would call it, but I just I really like it. I think it's dramatic and it's striking and it's it's interesting so I thought that was really cool that you could do that with foil so let me grab my other pieces here bring back my folders that I, are my flowers that I die cut a little wonky there I promise you that framelit does fit to the image I just didn't take the time to do that so now I'm going to use melon mambo ink to stamp my greeting. So I have a five and a half inch by one, a, one half inch strip of soft sea foam, and I'm using thank you from that same timeless tropical stamp set that the flowers came from. And I'm gonna stamp it more towards the right side of this strip right here. And I'm leaving a little bit of space there because I'm actually gonna wrap that end around my cardstock layer. And now we can bring back our card base. Okay, so this strip is going to get wrapped around this foil. And I'm going to put a little bit of snail on the back to adhere that. So just, um, just line that up like this until you're happy. And then you can loosely bend those strips back, flip it over, and add a little bit of snail to hold those ends down. Did you know the snail is retiring? They're getting rid of the dispenser and the refills, but Stampin' Up! is coming up with, coming out with two new adhesives. And they're supposed to be stronger and more on the roll, so it's actually more economical and it'll be more fun to work with. So this is going to go on our card base here. And I'm gonna use liquid glue for that. Whenever I dry emboss something, I like to use liquid glue to adhere it because that liquid can smush into those recessed places and it holds it better. And I'm just going to apply a little pressure here for a few seconds just to make sure it sticks. Okay. Oh, I just I love this effect. Especially with colored foil. I tried it with the champagne foil. Stampin' Up! has a lot of different colors of foil. Um, they had black, but it sold out. There's the Noble Peacock ones. There's gold, silver, champagne. And it worked with all of them, except for the champagne. The champagne, the effect wasn't very noticeable. But any of the other colors worked really well. So this is Tropical Oasis Designer Series paper. I cut them to two different sizes. And I'm going to use my fingernail just to distress the edge a little bit. I made a project sheet that has all the measurements for the pieces that I'm using in both of these cards today. So you don't have to try to write them down. I'll have the link to the project sheet in the description to this video. Both on YouTube and on Facebook. And you can print those project sheets out and you can use them if you want to recreate these cards. There's a supply list there. There's the picture of the projects. There's the dimensions of what to cut everything, what to die cut. So I hope it's a useful tool for you guys in your card making. Okay, so I've distressed that a little bit and now I'm going to adhere this to my foil. And I am going to use 
I'm actually going to use Fast Fuse for this. This is a adhesive that Stampin' Up! used to carry, but the new adhesive that they're coming out with is very similar to Fast Fuse. It's in a dispenser. It has a super strong hold, so it's essentially the same thing. Just repackaged so it's a lot easier to use. And we're going to attach that one right there. And we're going to attach this other one slightly offset from it. Now you might be going, why didn't you just use one piece of the designer series paper? It's the same pattern. Well, you know what? I don't know. I just like the way this looked. But you're certainly welcome to use just one piece of the designer series paper. It's your card. You can do whatever you want to do. Plus, I have a lot of designer series paper. So this is just one more way to use it up. Because, you know, if you use it up, you get to buy more. And with the new catalog coming out, I've seen the paper, I want more. Okay, so I'm putting those on with Stampin' Dimensionals, and the reason I'm lifting those up is because I'm going to add some really fun die-cut leaves underneath it. Now, the In the Tropics dies, this is the flower I used, the die I used to cut the flower out. These are the leaves right here that I use to cut, die cut, um, what I'm about to attach to my card. So there's four different styles that you can use. And I used designer series paper to cut out these four. And then this is soft sea foam. But what I'm actually going to do is take some old olive ink and I'm going to take a stampin' sponge. And I'm just gonna very lightly sponge on some old olive ink. I'm actually just gonna dab it onto the soft sea foam leaves. I, I like the speckled look that it gives to these. There we go. I like adding little details to my cards. Can you tell? I think it's what makes a card interesting. It's what makes you, makes you look at it just a little bit longer. Okay, and now this is, this is the fun part for me. I like just layering and tucking and seeing where I can get everything to fit. Now you'll notice this pattern is actually the back side of this one here. So Stampin' Up's 12 by 12 paper in this particular pack is double sided. So you get twice the options. Sometimes it's really hard though because you have to decide which pattern you're going to use and that can be difficult. But you know what? You can always buy a second pack. So don't think too hard about it and don't hoard it. Don't hoard your paper. It's meant to be used. That's what you bought it for. Okay, and we're just adding the leaves one by one here. And this is why we used dimensionals to adhere the flowers because it lifted them up off the card so that there's room for me to tuck these leaves in. Now you also notice that on this particular leaf some of the little um, pieces that were die cut remained in there and some fell out. I'm not even going to bother to poke all those little things out. They're just way too little and fussy and they don't take away, them being in there doesn't take away anything from this card. Okay, we have one last little touch here. These are Noble Peacock Rhinestones. These are also on the retiring list and they are discounted. So uh, I think they were $4.40 when I looked. Again, I have it on my project sheet. But it, these rhinestones come in Blueberry Bushel, Gorgeous Grape, Melon Mambo, Old Olive, and Pe Pretty Peacock. So I'm going to use an old olive rhinestone and I'm using a paper piercer or you can use a take your pick tool to add one right beside that thank you. And I just adore how this turned out. Let me show you my other ones. Oh, you know what? I forgot a linen thread, linen thread bow. Ah, how could I do that? Card is naked without something like that. So I'm going to tie it. And we're going to trim it. And I'm going to take my bone folder. See how that curls a little bit? I'm going to use my bone folder to give this a little curl, just like that old scissors and ribbon trick when you were um, 
wrapping presents and you had that like that shiny paper ribbon I guess it was and you can curl it with your scissors you can do the same thing with your linen thread and I am going to use a mini glue dot now I'm gonna have to roll it up a little bit so that it doesn't show underneath this linen thread bow but it is the best thing I found for sticking it on to the project so there we go now it is completed oh my goodness I love that and I, I tried it in black and like I said the black foil unfortunately sold out it was on the retiring list but it's just just the, the drama with this colored foil is really good so blueberry bushel would be another good color to try in that noble peacock foil pack so give it a try I mean, it's, it's fun, and you can pick up the sanding blocks at the Dollar Tree. So, very unusual card. When I posted this, it got a lot of comments, a lot. So, good technique, very easy, very doable. So, the next one we're going to do is this one. So, big difference from that last card. This has a softer, more vintage vibe to it. So, we're going to pull those these colors out. Crumb Cake, a go-to color, great color. To have in your cardstock stash it goes with everything this is a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock scored and folded in half at five and a half inches and again we're gonna set this aside this is another piece of crumb cake cardstock and it's slightly smaller than the card base five and three eighths of an inch five and three eighths of an inch and then four and an eighth of an inch so it's just a hair smaller and we are going to use the breathtaking bouquet background stamp to stamp our background. We used this last week to make a card and we're going to emboss it again. So I'm going to use Versamark to cover this. Versamark is the ink you use when you want to heat emboss. Now did you know you can ink up your stamp with Versamark, and because it's clear, you can then ink it up in another color of ink pad, stamp it, sprinkle on clear embossing folder, and voila. You can make any color and heat emboss just with that simple trick. But today we're going to heat emboss in white. That's, that's my favorite. So I'm going to carefully lay this on top of this background stamp, and then I'm going to take a piece of scratch paper, lay that on top. And let me get a clear stamping block and just press it like this, making sure that image transfers fully and completely. And then take that off. Okay, looks like I got a pretty good impression. Now see, you don't even have to take your background stamp out of the case to be able to use it. And now we're going to sprinkle it with white embossing powder. I use so much white embossing powder I actually buy a couple jars at a time to fill my container here. Okay now this one's gonna take a little bit extra time to heat emboss just because of the size of the panel but we're gonna do last week we watercolored the flowers this week we're going to sponge on some color. Okay. So I'm turning this on. Oh, I missed a little bit right over here. Can you see that powder melting? This is the technique that usually hooks everybody in the stamping. And after 20 plus years, I'm still using it. Never gets old. Never ever gets old. Okay, I'm keeping that nearby because I'm also going to be doing that with my um, sentiment. Okay, 
So I flipped it this way for this particular card and I'm gonna get a petal pink ink pad and that's what we're gonna sponge this with. So I'm using a stamp and sponge and again these come in great big circles but I cut mine into four sometimes eight um, wedges. Now I like to start off light because number one I don't want hard sponging lines and second it's always easier to add color but you can't take away color. Okay, add a little more there. I think that's good. That's just the right amount for me. Okay. And next. Where's the other little pieces? Oh, right beside me here. Okay. Next we are going to, we might as well stamp the greeting right here while I have all the embossing supplies out. And this one comes from Parisian Beauty. You're the joy of my life. But you could also use Life as a Magnificent Adventure or the Amour, Amour here. Or you can use a sentiment from another set. Itty Bitty Greetings has a lot of really good sentiments that would fit on this little strip here. So again, I'm going to use some Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp this towards the right, but not all the way to the end because I'm going to do, it's the same layout as the other card, just using different supplies. I loved this layout so much. I went ahead and made, I think it was like four or five cards with it. All right, I'm going to heat emboss this real quick. This will not take long, it's just a little skinny sentiment. There we go. Okay. Get these out of the way. Okay, so we've got that. And now we are going to die cut this piece right here. This is Parisian from the Parisian, was it Parisian Blossoms designer series paper? And I love the champagne gold that's on that script stamp there. And what we are going to use to die cut that out is the Ornate Layers die. These are going to be in the new catalog, and I'm going to use this tall, skinny one right here. And let me get my dryer sheet. Because this is an intricate die with lots of little holes, I'm going to use that little dryer sheet trick to ensure that most of it comes out. And I don't have to sit here and, and poke it all. And I'm going to run it back through. Okay. Take this off. Peel that away. And this, let me hold this up. If I peel it off slowly enough, all those little pieces will stick to that dryer sheet. Yep, see there's only a couple left down there. Most of it stayed on there. Best stamping trick ever. Okay. And I have a little pokey tool here to get that last one out. Okay. So now I think we are ready to assemble this card. Get my snail out. And again, the same technique. I'm going to put this on the bottom here and I'm going to wrap this around. Actually, I think I had it like this. I did. Okay, I wanted more of these roses to be showing than the other flowers. So I'm wrapping it around. I'm going to add some snail to the back. There we go. Hope I shifted it a little bit. The good thing with snail is, is it doesn't stick so permanently that you cannot readjust. So if it's, if your piece, if you used a snail and your piece isn't exactly where you wanted it, you can usually pull it up and readjust it. But now I am going to add fast fuse again to adhere this. Okay, and attach it. 
I'm really into this look where I cut the matting layers really close to the edges of the card base. That's going to go on top like that. And I'm going to use Fast Fuse to put that on too. Except I'm having trouble here with my runner. There we go. And that was one of the reasons actually why Stampin' Up! discontinued it. So the new stuff that they're coming out with should not have that problem. I can't wait to play with it and test it and try it out. I've got some pieces of vellum here that are scraps. And I'm going to use this leaf punch to punch out three of these. And now I'm going to show you what I did to these leaves. And one more. Okay. So vellum, I hope you can see this on the camera. It's transparent. It's see-through which makes it nice for layering and when you don't want to hide something. But if you bend it, crinkle it, crease it in any way, it gets a very distinctive, more solid white line. So what I did, rather than just glue these onto here just like this, I decided to crease them. And so each of these little leaves, I'm pinching them shut like this. So now each of these little leaves is going to have a nice crisp white vein line going down the middle of them and it will add just the right amount of texture to the card base or to the card I mean do you see that just a little thing but I think it's so much more interesting to look at than this one so I'm gonna go ahead and pinch the leaves of all these other ones too now you can do it with more than just this leaf punch. Um, there's a sprig punch. There's many, many die sets that have leaf images that you can die cut out and little springs and greenery. That seems to be a trend in card making right now is to add lots of greenery sprigs to your pro to our projects. And it's, they're not necessarily in green. Remember, you don't have to be quite so literal with your stamping projects. And I always have to remind myself of that too. I was playing a game the other night, a stamping game, and I was laughing at my end result because it was so literal and other people were thinking outside the box and I just wanted to slap myself on the forehead and go, silly, why did you think of that? So, must be the accountant side of me. So these little flowers are part of the ornate borders set that are going to be in the new catalog and I die cut them with champagne foil. So I'm actually going to pinch the edges of these flowers up a little bit and what's nice about the foil is because of its texture it holds its shape really well. So that's another fun foil technique you can do. Pinch it and mold it and shape it. It's like adult play-doh. Only it's paper. Okay. So we've got all our pieces here and we're going to start layering them on. I'm going to use glue dots because it's easier. So I'm going to start with the largest flower and I'm going to layer it. Actually, let's start with these because these are actually going to go underneath the flowers. So we're putting our leaf sprigs on with glue dots. do one there and we have our third one now when you're designing stuff there's a principle called I think it's the rule of rule of threes odd numbers basically but apparently people find things more pleasing when they are in odd groupings so whether you do three five seven nine it's more pleasing to the eye when you do things in odd numbers rather than even now, of course, rules are made to be broken because I'm the last person that likes to follow rules. So you do whatever you want to do. But if you're unsure of where to start, that would be a good place to start. Okay, so that was glue dots. And two more things. Two more details. I told you there were a lot of details on this card. This is Petal Pink Metallic Edge Ribbon. It's retiring also. And the edges of it are champagne colored. So it's going to match the champagne foil that's in our designer series paper here. And we're tying this in a big, fat, chubby bow. I'm going big with this one. 
if my fingers will do the work. They're not. Let's start over. Okay. I can tell this one's going to look much better. And I want that bow even bigger. Oh, there we go. Pull the glue dots back out to put this on. And I'm going to stick that right on top of those flowers there, just like that. And we've got to trim it. And I'm going to leave the tails a little bit long. I just, I love this ribbon so much. I wanted it to stand out on my card and I want to show it off. Now we've got Champagne Basic Rhinestones. I love these. These are so pretty and I'm so happy they're coming back. They have been on back order for the longest time, but they're going to be in the new catalog, so no worries. And you can see there's three different sizes in the package. I'm going for the biggest one. And I'm going to stick it right by my sentiment right there. Oh, love this card. I hope to some, find somebody that's, a, that's the joy of my life to send it to. I can get my words out. Okay. There we go. Look at that. Aren't those pretty samples? I'm just like sitting here patting my back all over because I love this. And you'll see I did the same layout with that vertical piece and then something going across. They're all the same layout but using different products and they all just, they look completely different. So you don't have to overthink stamping. When you find something you like, keep on doing it. So, um, but yeah, thanks for joining me today. If you place a $50 order in my online store, shop with Nicole.stampinup.net, I would so appreciate it. And use this reward code and I will send you a new in color sample pack. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love the opportunity to be yours. So please let me know if I can ever do anything for you. Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper. Make sure you follow me on Facebook. Or if you're on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you can always be notified of when I have videos. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you guys next Tuesday at the regular 2 p.m. time. All right, bye.